Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where today, it's finally happening. For real this time, it's happening, we're fixing the nuclear power plant. For the uninitiated, it kinda has a small nuclear waste problem. Some miscalculations had happened, and it's not running perfectly. And there's been just a little bit of nuclear waste buildup. And even our main intern, Bart, is a little scared of the situation. And he loves nuclear waste. But don't worry, by the end of the day, this power graph is gonna look fantastic because I have the fix! And this power plant's gonna be working perfectly. For sure, 100% this time. And if you totally believe that, or don't, remember to leave a like. But okay, what's causing this problem? The problem is we don't have enough heat sinks. And because we don't have enough heat sinks, we don't have enough plutonium rods being made. And those rods are saving us from all the nuclear waste because you can put the rods in the awesome sink and get rid of it, whereas the nuclear waste you can't directly throw away. And with that system stalling, the nuclear waste has built up, which clogs up our nuclear reactors, causing them to shut down every so often, making our power graph look like freaking ridiculousness. So the solution we've been working on is a new heat sink factory where we'll make the heat sinks here and then directly transport them over to the power plant, solving all of our problems. But we still have one more thing to deal with until we can get these heat sinks going. We don't have any rubber here. So we made this whole factory to make aluminum casings. We got the casings, but the rubber is a problem. We have some rubber over there. That's a fuel power plant we have, but that can only make 400 rubber per minute. And we need 600 rubber per minute to make this all work properly. So we have to go to the bank. AKA our super massive rubber factory over in the blue crater lake biome. And that's making like thousands and thousands of rubber per minute. So we just have to transport it over to that heat sink factory and we are good to go. I have not worked at this place in a minute though. So I am not 100% sure what is going on. So let's see what we do. We have two trains that are gonna be able to bring the rubber out. I don't know how I belted this all together though. And apparently neither did past kids. <laughs> what is going on here? Oh wait, now I'm kind of remembering. So we have a variety of systems making 750 lines of rubber. Because each of these is making 150 rubber per minute. Okay. And oh my goodness, you won't believe this. But this train on the left here, that has like the extra rubber, guess how much rubber it'll be transporting per minute. The whole train transports 600 rubber per minute, which is exactly the amount of rubber we need for the heat sink place. It, it could not have worked out any better. And that's 600 rubber for the whole train. So that means it's gonna be distributed over five freight cars, meaning the throughput rate of this whole system will be perfect because we have to transport this stuff all the way from here to over here. So now the plan is, since we have the heat sink factory on top of this cliff and a train track below it, we'll make an interchange right here and we'll build the train station off to the left and then bring up all the rubber up that tower over there and done skis. Though while we build, we have to keep our eyes open there is a nuclear death train that travels along this track. That one, full of uranium. And if it passes by us, we'll probably die if we don't run away in time. So let's just try and build this as fast as we can. Just need a little interchange. And we need this track. This is the outbound track. So we want this kind of to like here. No, no, no! <sighs> you tried. You tried. Yeah, it didn't take too long. The train station's in, looking good, and there is our train. And now we can finish off those heat sinks. Just gotta do a little bit of belt work around here, and it shouldn't be too bad. Most of the belt work was already done last time, so just one more isn't gonna be too much hassle. And now things should be ready. So rubber, we brought it up to here. You can go to there. Everything disperses. There are not gonna be any problems, right? Why is this rubber so slow? Wait, we're, no. 
<laughs> that doesn't look good. Where'd all the rubber go? Excuse me? Wait a second. No, wait a second. No, this was a past Kibbs problem. I wanted to test the throughput rates, and so I put a awesome sink down here. Yeah. Throughput rates, they're all good. Just FYI, so it's not going to be a problem there. Now I can send the rest upstairs. Ah oh, yes, much better. And the heat sinks will go downstairs. And with everything being built over to the power plant, now it is time for the big fix. So let's get over there and start activating the emergency meltdown procedures. So our power plant has lots of bells and whistles in case we ever have emergencies. Like if our power in our world shuts off for some reason. Or you know, somehow we get a little too much extra nuclear waste. We have options to fix this. We have battery backups for days in here. And things should be okay. So long as everything works out as planned. So up here is our control desk. Main issues are we have some reactor shut down to kind of slow down the waste and insufficient heat sinks. Well that's fixed and we're probably gonna have to shut down more reactors. But first, uh, we're gonna keep fuel rod production online. Keep things moving. Back up plutonium. So this, I don't think this switch works. I don't remember what that does. I had a hard drive meltdown and I lost all of my notes for the power plant, so it's a little lost technology here. Pump backup batteries. We don't need batteries. Our power is still luckily online. We just need to activate the meltdown switch. And that sends power to the emergency processing facility. So this place was built actually right when we we're building the nuclear power plant itself. And mainly it's for if we have like a complete meltdown. Like all of our power crashes, we have no way to get rid of excess nuclear waste, that kind of jazz. So we have stored products here like uranium, we have all of the acid stored up, etc, etc. And if that ever happens, like all of the world's power goes offline, we'll still be able to process waste and kind of recover with this factory here which is turning nuclear waste into non-fissile uranium. And we're doing that because non-fissile uranium is only mildly radioactive. Like you could get away with wearing like not even a hazmat suit and being generally okay if you don't have a lot of this stuff on hand. It's not too bad. And then upstairs, we have massive battery banks to power this whole factory for a very long time. In case power goes out. And then to store excess nuclear waste, well, we got Many, 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 many bins. And yes, it looks like we have the power online here. Good. So now we have to go through all the procedures of the meltdown sequence. We have to redirect the nuclear waste. We have to redirect all the acids. And hopefully we do not shut down our entire power grid in the process. If there ever was a time where this could happen, this is most likely where it will happen. We have to move very, very, very quickly and make sure everything's doing well. So we have some smart splitters here that re can redirect the nuclear waste. We will activate it out the center. Uh, any? Any goes down that way. Yes. Nuclear waste out of the way. Next, we have to move the acids. So in order to process the nuclear waste, we need the acids. We have some stockpiles at the emergency facility, but that's not gonna last long. So we are going to redirect all the sulfuric acid and all that jazz from the power plant over to there. And luckily we have that all set up in our control room, so it's not gonna be like we have to run around all too much. Just had to switch that one splitter, and now we have to switch these. Close valve in case of emergency. Well, kind of is that right now, so shut her down. So none can go this way. All of it has to go through this other pipe, and that's to the emergency area. Same with the sulfuric acid. Shut her down, and now things are gonna get a little crazy. Why is there still so much nuclear waste here? Is it actually being sent over? Wait a second, what's up with that? Why isn't that belt full? We need to be getting rid of like this much nuclear waste, and we're getting rid of that much nuclear waste. No, 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 we got a problem already. Oh, and why is there only one belt of waste going right now? There's two belts. What did I do? Uh, where's the other belt going? going down so oh my gosh past kibs why I don't care about the damage who cares 
Why is there a second one? Is this the same kind of thing? Just send it all that way. Do we need nuclear waste going in this direction? Kind of, right? Or do we? What's happening here? This is the non-fissile uranium that's being made into plutonium rods upstairs. Okay, that can be fine. That's... No, we should kind of drain this system. All the stuff in our power plant, we're sending it all out of here. We'll drain the plutonium line of nuclear waste so that when we restart the system, when everything should be quote unquote good, it'll be okay. No, none. Send everything to the emergency facility. I want to see those belts full of nuclear waste. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about, brother. And while that is happening, we should shut down some reactors. We should ease the burden off our system. We don't need all the power from all these reactors right now. Like, we're making plenty of power. 360... What? A lot. So, we can temporarily shut a few down. That way, all of the backed up w waste and other plants will start to filter through. Kind of the good and bad is the more of these we shut down, the faster the problem's gonna be solved. The faster the problem's solved, the more likely we're not gonna completely collapse our system. But, like, should we cut off another 200,000 production? Oh, we really should. Like, there's no way all of the machines in our entire world are gonna turn on all at once, right? No. That's, that's like 200,000 megawatts? No. Yeah, it should be okay. And yeah, we, we really gotta get rid of all this stuff here. And mission critical! How is the emergency factory running? I don't think we've ever ran it before. Maybe as like a small test, but this is no small test. Uh, it, we should have all of the acids redirected. I don't know if we're gonna... Yeah, we should have enough uranium over here too. Hopefully. Is there a uranium line I have to redirect? No, it's, it's already here, right? Yeah, it's already here. So take a deep breath. Now let's look at the acids. It's full, full... As long as all these are full, that's like my main concern. Everything else should be running just fine. That's full. And the last one. Okay, since all these are full, that means all of the uh, acids are being brought over from the main factory. We're not using reserves. This thing won't randomly shut down at some point, which is good. And the numbers should be looking pretty good now too. Like we should be seeing some non-fissile uranium being stored here. Yes, okay, good. We're making it. All right, all right, all right. Things are working out. Power graph, how are you? Stable. Okay. Okay. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're getting rid of the nuclear waste finally. It's happening. So let's have this happen a little faster. Let's keep bringing down the power. We're gonna go below the max consumption line. Now, that'll mean it's possible for our power grid to collapse. But it's not looking like we're drawing any extra power by doing most of this. Like, our consumption graph is pretty steady, so we can go below the line. Yeah, we have an extra 100,000 production on our consumption. I feel that like that's safe. We're, we're fine. That's, that's enough. I am not getting greedy with this, okay? And we still have lots to do. We need the nuclear waste from inside the factory to be clearing out. And at this point, we've waited a while, all of the nuclear waste is going to the emergency facility, so how much is left in these systems? So 150 is in there, 130 nuclear waste is there. Okay, good. The waste is processing. Now all the non-fissile uranium's backing up because we're not doing plutonium. So this machine, our adjustment, will split the waste from emergency and plutonium production. Well now, let's send any out to the right that's gonna go upstairs and that is gonna make which one is it yeah plutonium pellets so it takes the non-fissile and uranium and makes pellets this activates the particle accelerators though so that could be a bit of a hit on power how are we looking it's looking fine but here comes the waste and off go the loops these particle accelerators are the most hungry machines in the whole game like, they're fully overclocked too, and when they ramp up to full utilization, dude, they are insane. Even at idle, they use over a thousand megawatts. All right, but we haven't crashed yet, so it looks like we're good. Definitely causing spikes in consumption, up to 92 though, so we're still okay. There goes our heat sinks. 
and the other materials, so that's fantastic. That means we're making plutonium now. Yes. Oh my gosh, look at all those beautiful plutonium rods. It also means back in our control room here, we have to readjust the acids again, since we're activating this factory partially. And we'll just split this to like 300. Yeah, that, that's fine. The number exactly doesn't matter. Just we need some acid going there, some acid going to the other factory. And the waste has died down a lot. That's exactly what we wanna see. Here comes the plutonium. We can see that that production's happening. A lot of our uranium is going to the emergency area though, which is slowing down nuclear fuel rod production, but we don't really care about that right now. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh <laughs> yeah, buddy. Look at all of those rods, dude. That is so much nuclear waste for processing. Things are working. The fix is happening. So now it's been a little while and the lines are clear. All of the waste has been processed in the extra facility and it's slowed down up here. So all the machines in our actual power plant have caught up. No more extra nuclear waste anywhere. And it's hungry now for more. Thus, it is time to readjust things and turn the system back on to 100% capacity. The real test to see if our heatsink fix actually fixes stuff or if that wasn't the actual problem. So back to the control room then, and we have to readjust the valves, fully open them so everything remains in the factory. Then we have to turn off the Backup factory, it should be done processing all of the waste, hopefully, maybe. So meltdown procedures are off. Next, we have to turn on all of the rest of the reactors. So let's get our power back to its normal levels, and we should end up at around 400,000 megawatts of power production. And now we are fully back online. Yep, just around 400,000. But as we let all that stuff get sorted, let's go back to our backup waste facility and see how much damage we did. Because I have no idea how much actual nuclear waste we had backed up. Looks like we have, okay, not too bad. About a bin, a bin and a bit of non fissile uranium. It's not a lot of nuclear waste then. You know what we could do though? Since things are running fine and our power is kind of re-leveling itself, I'm gonna make an extra little dumpster system. So instead of having our process here stop at the non fissile uranium, which is a little radioactive, we could process it into plutonium pellets. And all it needs is a little extra nuclear waste, which shouldn't be a problem in most cases, right? And all we'll need are a few particle accelerators and assemblers. And after a little bit of fiddling, we now have the world's most power intensive garbage compactor ever. The only bad thing really is it makes a more radioactive material. And I kind of liked having them non-fissile here because it wasn't as radioactive. But then again, if we're filling up like, what is it? Hundreds of bins of this stuff? Yeah, it doesn't matter how little the radioactivity is. It's gonna be crazy. So now we have a little bit of extra storage here. Uh, we're actually making these though. So we make the pellets in the particle accelerator. Then I just decided to convert them into plutonium encased cells. All it took was a little concrete and it compacts them an extra 50%, so why not? But to be perfectly honest, I just wanted to give the nuclear reactor some time to run for a bit just so we could come back to the control room and see everything is working properly. And it looks like it. Like the waste is moving just fine. We have a little bit of plutonium, all right, good. Of course, the main thing is the power graph. If our power is stable, that means things are fine. Oh my god, that's about as good as you could have ever expect it. Look at that healthy power production. And with that, I'm willing to say that we've done it. We have fixed the nuclear power plant after long last. Now we'll never have to worry about power again. But anyway, that's gonna be all here. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day and bye-bye.